What is up everyone? My name is Michael Pohl with Bay Area Aquatics and today we're going to be talking about the 75 gallon that is usually behind me in most of my videos. Alright, so this is my second time recording this YouTube video because my microphone decided to die on me like 45 seconds into recording this video the last time and I didn't notice until after I spent 20 something minutes filming the video. So, I'm a little tired, a little annoyed, uh, rookie mistake, I didn't change the batteries in the lavalier pack, and uh, yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and dive into this video and try to get through it. All right, so a lot of you guys have asked for like a, a tank update, showing all my tanks. I was gonna do a big video um, showing all of my tanks and going in depth, and then uh, Bentley Pasco started doing a tank of the week video, and I really liked that concept. I'm not gonna do it weekly, I'm just gonna kinda do it as I do major changes to my tanks, but I figured I'm gonna go through tank by tank and start showing you guys my tanks in a little more detail, how they work, what's in it, um, what, you know, my my schedule for it is and all that. So like I said, today we're gonna be talking about my 75 gallon planted platy community tank. I've had this tank set up since December of 2018. I bought it at the Petco dollar per gallon sale and it's gone through quite a bit of changes over the last couple of months. When I first bought it, I was on a really, really shoestring budget. I really shouldn't have bought it, but I, I wanted it and I missed the Petco dollar per gallon sale like, you know, October, September-ish, whenever it normally is last year. And when I went to go get one, when I actually had the money saved up for a 75, they, uh, they were out of stock and they didn't order again until after the sale. And so I was really disappointed and so I ended up waiting until December. I already had the stand built and everything like that. And as soon as December came around, I wanna say their sale started on the 26th. I was the first one in the store. I was there before they were even opened. And I sat there and I waited for them to dig me out a 75 gallon so that I could get my 75 gallon tank and get it back here. Now I love my 75 gallon tank. It's the biggest tank that I own and it's my pride and joy. I show it to everyone that comes to my house. Everyone loves it. And I put a lot of time and money into this tank. But like I said, this tank has gone through quite a bit of transitions um, from when I first got it. It was pretty much just empty um, to now. Obviously it's got quite a bit of stuff in it. When I first got it, I just had a couple of plastic plants and I threw them in here and that's just kind of what I had, I couldn't really afford anything. I didn't want to buy things that I didn't want, but what I wanted was expensive. And so I'd rather just let it sit empty than, you know, buy things that I didn't need and waste the money and just prolong the process. So after a while, I finally started getting the cash saved up and I bought this piece of driftwood um, from Houston Manzanita, Adam, and I uh, absolutely love it. And then I got some plants and I got some more hardscape and I got the lighting for it and everything like that. And it just all kind of came in together and it and now it looks like a good tank. It's still changing, it's still you know in the evolution process, but it's something that I'm happy to look at and proud to show off and I really enjoy. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the equipment and stuff on the outside of the tank and work my way in explaining on what this tank is about. All right, so this is a 75 gallon tank from Petco, like I said, it's an Aquion tank. The lids that I have on it are the PetSmart lids for their 75 gallons. I wanna say they're like 23 inch and there's two of them or something like that. They're like 20 bucks at PetSmart and they're glass lids, nothing too crazy. For lighting, I have a Beamswork LED light, grows my plants great, really, really like it. Don't have anything bad to say about it. I've got that plugged into a Miros or Miros or something like that smart switch so that I can control the timing and everything. I control it from my phone, my Google Home, whatever it is. Um, and it makes it real easy to synchronize all my tanks all on the smart switches. I can put them all onto one little on off cycle or anything like that. For filters, I have two AquaClear 110s. Um, I take an AquaClear 110 sponge and I slice it in half like a hot dog, no, not a hot dog bun, like a uh, hamburger bun, so that it's two pieces. And I put half of one in each filter. Then I put two or three bags of biomedia in it. And I put a little bit of filter floss with some egg crate to keep the filter floss from kind of coming out of the filter into the tank. And then on the intake, I have a aquarium co-op extra large pre-filter sponge. They're really coarse one. Um, Corey sent me one and I loved it so much. I bought a second one to put on the other one. For heating, I have a Fluval E300 heater. Um, I really like it. Really, 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 really like it. Um, and definitely would recommend it. I bought another one for some other tanks and some things like that too. And the last piece of equipment that I have on the tank is back in this corner. I have an aquarium co-op USB nano air pump and a Zis air filter or an Zis air stone not an air filter, um, an air stone. Uh, they're little never clog air stones that are on Aquarium Co-op's website. Um, Corey sent me a bunch of them, absolutely loving it so far, and uh, yeah. 
As far as inside the tank, like I said, I got this piece of driftwood. It's spider wood from Houston Manzanita. I want to say it was like $60 or $70, which was a really good price for that type of wood. Um, and then shipping, obviously, to wherever you are. Um, but I absolutely love it. It was the first big buy that I bought for the tank. Um, cost me more than the tank cost itself by the time you added shipping and everything into it. Um, but I really wanted a big, nice driftwood piece versus like a little, you know, couple of pieces. I didn't want the tank to be very empty at the top. I wanted a big, like feature driftwood piece. And that's what I, that's what I told Adam. I said, this is my budget. This is what I want. What can you do for me? And he was able to hook it up uh, with an awesome, I paid full price for it, I, you know, um, but he was like, hey, these are the options you got. And then I chose the one that I liked and I've been super, super happy with it. Um, I bought it from Adam again and you know, you can't complain too much. Definitely highly recommend Houston Manzanita if you need any wood. As far as hardscape, I have some Dragonstone that I got off of Amazon. Um, I had good luck with the seller. It was a good price and you know, you get kind of a random selection of stones, but hey, you work with what you got. For substrate, I have black diamond blasting media. Um, I have a really thin layer of black diamond blasting media because I don't like it showing above the trim. Um, I wish that I had done a thicker layer and I should add more sand to it, but it's already planted and I, I don't feel like dealing with it. And I, yeah, uh, I, it may be an inch of sand if that. Um, in reality, I probably should put about two inches, if not three inches of sand in just for the plants. Um, but plants are doing okay and uh, you know, it is what it is. But Black sand, you know, 50 pound bag for like eight bucks, you can't beat it. As far as plants, this is where I'm gonna start butchering names really, really badly. Um, the majority of this, I got sent from uh, Trent Weldon over at uh, Weldon Aquatics. Um, he sent me the, uh, what is it? The Pogo, Pogo Stenum Stellatus octopus plant. I just call it the octopus plant. Um, that is pretty much all right here, all behind my head, and then all off to the side here. It's my main background plant. Um, he sent me just a little bit. It started in the corner and it just took off and started growing and I replanted it and replanted it and replanted it. And it's it's been a great plant for my tank. Um, I will start removing some of it eventually. I wanna get some other plants. Um, but for right now, it's been great to kind of fill in the tank and give it that nice big green lush look. Trent also sent me some dwarf sag, uh, which is down here in front of the wood and it's my carpeting plant. Um, I tend to trim it to about two inches tall, maybe a little shorter, um, and it's just kind of growing in all right along here in front of the whole front of the tank. Um, so I've got that nice flat open swimming area. The next plant I have is a couple of Boost plants. I have a Boost Wavy Leaf, which is a little tiny one. Um, I bought it thinking it was a different one that Trent sent me because I really liked what he sent me, but it wasn't. Um, so I bought like 11 of them because I really, really liked it and I found a good deal on them, um, only to find out it was a different one. It wasn't the one that I thought. Uh, but the one that I really love is the Boost uh, Godzilla, I think it is. Yeah, Boost Godzilla absolutely love it that's my favorite plant in the aquarium i think it's probably the favorite plant that i have period i just love the look of it it's a super simple plant it's like a very dark green has a cool texture it flowers up for me occasionally and i just love it highly recommend it they're a lot more expensive than the wavy leaves they're like 10 15 dollars a plant but i love it i wish i had more than the two of them uh, i'm gonna buy more than you know the two that i've got i just kind of wait to find the right deal I also have some Anubias that I've gotten from I don't even know where. Uh, I've got some Java Fern Narrow Leaf and some Crypt Wendedi uh, that I picked up from a Sacramento Aquarium Auction or Sacramento Aquarium Society Auction. I've also got a big thing of Java Moss and Christmas Moss kind of shoved right here in the wood, mainly for the live bears to hide and the fry and stuff. Um, so, you know, it looks real nice along the bottom of the wood there. And then I've got a couple of random stem plants a friend of mine gave me. Um, you know, he just gave me a whole bag of them, didn't tell me what was in it. He said they were just all easy to grow and just throw them in the substrate and you'd be good. And there's one that he gave me that's growing super slow and there's only two stems of it and I really, really like it. I don't know what it is and I keep meaning to ask him, but if you know what it is, I'm gonna overlay, you know, a picture or video of it right now. Um, let me know in the comments down below because I really wanna buy some more of it. I just don't know what it is and I keep forgetting. As far as fertilizing the plants, I have aquarium co-op root tabs, I wanna say every four inches or so in a grid pattern, um, four or five inches um, in the sand been growing plants great, obviously, as you can see. And then I also do a weekly dose of Easy Green from Aquarium Co-op. Um, occasionally I'll throw a second dose in halfway through the week, uh, a half of a second dose in halfway through the week. So it's 75, so I do eight pumps on Sunday when I do a water change. Sometimes Wednesday or Thursday, if I remember, I'll throw uh, four squirts in, but I usually forget. So more than often, it's just the eight once a week. Now, as far as stocking for the fish, um, I've got a single koi angel fish in here somewhere. I don't know where he is. Um, I've got a single rainbow shark, which is my favorite fish that I own. I've got 10 panda cory catfish. I've got 
two Harley Quinn Rasboras. I know they're schooling fish. They're kind of my orphans. I had a school of them and those are the two that are left and they just kind of wound up in the 75 because that's the best place for them. And then the main fish in this tank are mutt platies basically. Um, I think I've got orange painted, red wag, sunburst, and I think yellow Mickey Mouses. I think I've got one or two of those um, that ended up in the bag on accident. And uh, I love them. I, I really like the platies. Everyone keeps telling me I should do something different. I like the look of the platies. I think they're really colorful. They're the right size. I can put a lot of them in. Um, I've only got about a dozen, if not a little more, plus half a dozen fry floating around. Um, the angelfish kind of keeps the fry in check, but I want more obviously. So I think I'm gonna end up ordering like 20, 30 more, um, just because I really, really want a ton of them. I don't care if the tank's gonna be a little overstocked. I don't mind doing the extra water changes. I just really want all that active movement around it. So I think that's probably gonna be my next step is to buy more platies as well as the plants. And that's pretty much it. That's my 75 gallon tank. So let me know what you guys think of it in the comments down below. If you're new here and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please consider doing so. Hit the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.